<laughs> so right. For building an aluminium air battery, the first thing that we need is a battery case that is not easily affected by the electrolyte. Now, these pulley-like things are printed with ABS 3D printer filament and these are going to house the cathode terminals of the battery with each pulley representing a single cathode. Here you can see some filament web on some pulley holes which needs to be cleaned properly before installation. After the cleaning process, it is time for the cathode installation. Here you can see I'm using a long screw plus some XYZ pieces to create a shaft so that I can connect my pulley to the drill press. This process is going to help me with faster cathode installation. Next, I've hooked in the steel wire and now it is time to wound it on the pulley. And finally, this is how it looks after completion. Please note, that the 3D print design link will be provided in the description. You can check it out. Now, here I'm printing a battery case, which is going to contain the cathode, the anode, and the electrolyte. The design looks quite good, although it could have been a little more compact. But anyways, let's move on with this one. Also, please note that this design is not going to work with the PLA filament because that is going to dissolve with the potassium hydroxide electrolyte whereas the ABS filament is resistant to it. So now that the case is ready, it is time to install all the cathodes in every cell. You can see I'm shaking it and it is not coming out. Next comes the anode, which is the aluminium plate. Here I'm using this magnet to show that it is non-magnetic. Now let's mark the area so that we can cut it out as much as we need without wasting any of it. So I was cutting the aluminium sheet with this sheet cutter but it got damaged midway. So useless product. The gear broke. Don't buy. Let's use this 6 years old sheet cutter. The plate is a little thicker in size so it is a little difficult to cut it with my hand scissors but right now this is the best I have. Now let's play some music by the time I complete the anode plates. Finally, now comes the making of the electrolyte. So I have this plastic bottle, well cleaned. Now, let's cut it off. All right, let's keep all this aside. And here we have this small thing. 
Next, I'm going to pour in 35 ml distal water in it. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This seems a bit less, so let's increase it to 50 ml. Next, I'm going to pour in 5 ml potassium hydroxide in it. Now, let's point my multimeter to 20 volts DC voltage measurement mode. And finally, connect my multimeter pinouts to the battery output terminals, positive to positive and negative to negative. Finally, it is time to pour in the electrolyte. Okay, first cell. Well, single cell is drawing more than 5 ml. Oh, we are close here. So, it is around 7.5 ml per cell. Single cell done. Moving on to the next one. Obviously, there should be zero volts because the cells are connected in series. And finally, the last cell. Okay. And go. I will see it later. Let's fill in first. And we are done. How much volt are we doing? Oh my god! It is more than 10 volts. 10.2 volts. That is crazy. <laughs> cool, right? 10.2 volts battery. Much more compact than before. And it did around 4.5 volts. And I said in that video that there was some fault. And uh, this one is working perfectly fine. We are doing here 10.15 volts. <laughs> Time to test some loads with it. Okay, so here I have this... Uh, motor fan this time all right then let's touch the wires and see what happens <laughs> it is it is working <laughs> wow that is so cool man <laughs> oh my 10 volts <laughs> fuel cell oh <laughs> this this battery is pretty good much better than before it is actually running this big motor <laughs> nice okay now let's yeah and I'm also going to show you the type of motor here DC Swiss motor cool right now let's move on with a bigger motor this time uh, for which i have this uh, 24 volts big motor it is used in photocopy machines permanent magnet dc motor once again and uh, okay one wire connected and let's see what happens for the second one and <laughs> it is running. Such a big motor and running. Now let's disconnect this one also and move on to an even bigger motor this time. Now this is a much bigger motor and uh, let's see if it can actually run it at good enough speed and even and even if it does not run it it is not going to be a big deal since uh, the starting current is going to be much higher for this motor so let's try it anyways and see what happens and uh, go oh. <laughs> it, is, it is even running such a big motor you see Uh, yeah, of course, it is running at a really slow speed because this motor is 36 volts and uh, the battery is producing only 10 volts. So, yeah, no wonder the motor is much heavier and the battery is quite light. <laughs> I've connected this drill bit to it. Now, let's do some ampere measurements also. Hope you can see the display. Yeah, right. You can see it. 
these are the wires okay positive to positive and uh, negative to negative oh I didn't even turn on my multimeter <laughs> moving on to 200 milliamperes once again and see what happens and go 160 milliamperes once again 150 160 now what i have seen is that the current is a little lower than the previous one but the voltage is higher maybe because i might have just used uh, the power from this battery uh, to run the loads and all and because uh, when i tried running the motors uh, with my previous video it did not work so since this time the motors worked uh, with this battery so i think that initially the current was higher but now it has reduced somehow yeah 160 milliamperes same as before that's for the steel finally let's connect my led lights and uh, there is some important information that i need to share at the end of the video so don't go away the battery is going uh, a little towards down but right now <laughs> the brightness for a single led is uh, quite high okay yeah right <laughs> moving on to my next led and this one i think morphe law is going to get applied no no morphe law and this is purple moving on to the white one and here we have it cool <laughs> right <laughs> enough to make a small study lamp right oh that's the blue one i really hope that you people are enjoying the video so make sure that you subscribe and support me and hit that like button and if you really want to go through the chemistry and the details for this video like the very chemistry you must join the membership okay wrong firing and oh now more feel oh well this one is even brighter you see the green is seems like the brightest <laughs> <laughs> so right it's beautiful oh not great the short circuit here <laughs> see now <laughs> it is the brightest possible output I have ever had Beautiful blue LED. See the bubble formation that's the reaction that is going on right now it is eating away aluminium oh I can't believe that I had red LED and I was thinking that I've lost it maybe I just forgot to test this one Wow. Now, I was about to tell you something very important. Uh, the aluminium air batteries are really good, exceptional. But uh, let's give you a demo here. I'm going to test the voltage once again as I did at the beginning. I've done no change to the battery or the electrolyte it is same as before and uh, go here you see that the battery voltage has reduced to around 4 volts 
which is very bad, really bad. And how did that happen? What's the reason? This is what I'm going to tell you now. So what you just saw was the reduction in the output performance of the cell after some time of use. And that happened because of dendrites formation and passivation. Dendrites form because of the deposition of the aluminium metal on the cathode surface, uh, resulting in uneven structures and thus shorting the entire cell and so reduced output voltage. While passivation this happens because of the protective layer formation on the surface of the cathode. It can also occur on the surface of the aluminium plate, uh, which is the anode. But uh, right now I have uh, experienced or researched that this occurs majorly on the cathode if you are using steel. And as my research says, the steel cathode is much more prone to the dendrites and the passivation. So have a happy day, stay safe, bye bye.